College basketball fans, welcome back to the College Ball Show. I'm Chris, he's Marshall, and we're here to discuss, normally I'd say college basketball, and we are going to do that. We are definitely going to do that. But obviously, some things have changed since last Monday, to say the least. Uh, with this coronavirus, first and foremost, you know, we hope everybody uh, is okay and is taking this serious and doing the things they need to do and, you know, totally understand and, and, and you know, thoughts go out to the people that are going to not be able to work, um, especially if you can't get some sort of paid leave, it's sick paid leave as well. There's a lot of topics, a lot of stuff going on in our country right now. So we're just basically doing this podcast to get your mind off for, for a little bit. We'll talk a little bit about it. But we are going to talk a little college basketball as well. Um, you know, my co-host Marshall, he's a teacher. I work at a bar and I also do pod- podcasts for income. And both of mine are a little on the rocks right now. The podcast uh, is better, actually, then. Now, sure, there's no sports, but I can at least just do it. Uh, whereas I can't show up to the bar. Uh, I mean, I could show up, but it really won't get me far. Um, so yeah, that's basically where we're at as a country. Like I said, I, you know, I feel for the folks that are going to be put in a, you know, dramatically tough situation financially. Also, the folks with the, the children, you know, the, a lot of children. What are you going to do with elementary school? Middle school, high school? Yeah, you know, they're older, but. What are you going to do with elementary kids? That's what I really feel for, too. I've been talking about that a variety of ways. So, you know, we're just going to try to get your mind off of it. Obviously, it it started out a little bit ago last week where, you know, the NCAA had said, hey, you know, we're going to do the tournament. We're going to have March Madness. We're doing the NCAA tournament, but it'll be with no fans, no fans whatsoever. And, you know, I remember texting Marshall, my co-host, and some other folks going, "Man, that's going to be that's going to be strange." And this is, you know, this is also at a time where, you know, we don't have a lot of raw data on this stuff anyway, but we had less of it then. Let's put it that way. Now we are starting to see some of the effects it can have, some of the things we can curb it, and just you know, what kind of mess this is going to be economically, physically, whatever. But um. When you start to add it up, you know, probably the biggest thing was Rudy Gobert and him getting the virus. And then the NBA going, okay, the second a player gets one, we got to shut down the league. Because obviously, you know, if the ball, they're spreading it on the ball in the locker room to the fans. Anytime a ball goes into the stands, you touch it. Like, there's just really no way to do that if you want to be smart of this. So, really, Rudy, it sounds weird, and I don't mean to be, like, this shallow or anything like that. But if you look at it, the fact when the NBA canceled it, their season, or suspended it, whatever, right, it really woke up a lot of people. And, you know, let's be honest, Americans, Tom Hanks. You know, when Tom Hanks got it. All of a sudden, people are like, oh, shit, this is real. What's going on now? It's not just the flu. Is it worse, or is it? are the numbers going to be similar? Or, you know, a lot of people just throwing out a lot of stuff we don't really know. So um, we know that there's issues, obviously. But when the NBA closed down their season, you know, at that point, they were saying mid-April, we'll, we'll reconvene. It's basically 30 days. Then we'll figure it out. They've already – now we're hearing leaks of – mid to late June at the earliest, you know, as far as it going, you know, with the ending the regular season, then the playoffs, yada, yada, yada. I don't want to bore you on NBA stuff too much, but obviously that was one of the biggest things that was like an eye opener. And in the long run, that may be something that really helps us to an extent as far as spreading it. So, and you know, the NCAA tournament, Obviously, the high school tournaments, too, the basketball tournaments and hockey tournaments, you have so many people throughout a day going into the same arena. It just had, it couldn't, it couldn't happen. I know a lot of people are pissed. I know a lot of people are bummed out. 
Some people think it's still a hoax. Whatever your thought process is on it, it just made sense not to do this, especially the NCAA tournament. Like I said, you have how many games, you know, per weekend for four straight days at one site with all those people coming in and out, and it made sense, you know. So it is strange. It was going to be strange to watch it without fans, but now it's gone, you know. You just got to deal with it. But we are going to be here to kind of help you through it a little bit. And so this show, and I'm going to bring in uh, my co-host, Marshall, right now, too. And um, this show, we're going to focus on bracket all. Now, obviously, unfortunately, the NCAA didn't release their bracket. A lot of people were just saying, come on, dude, like, just do it. Just, just, just so we could know, just so we could, you know. And it's not even the fans, you know, some, some of it's the fans, but, you know, a lot of it's the players. They work, you know, so hard, but just, just, just release something based off what you thought, who'd get in, where'd they be seating. But we're going bracketology, ESPN.com, the, the, the real bracketology. A lot of people are this or that, but we know that the, the rate is like 66 of the 68 are in, you know, that type of thing. So. We're not going to go down every game. We're just going to go over the regions. We're going to go over the Midwest, the East, the West, the South, and kind of just talk our way through, oh, what great of a game that would have been. Oh, I think this person, I think this team's in the Sweet 16. And, you know, Marshall's going to get his Penn State to the fucking Sweet 16 now, even though we know Hell that yeah. happened. But you got it. You got it. Hey, you were right. You you're right. They did not go to the Sweet 16, right? They did not go. <laughs> so I mean, you were right. You called it. You called it. I'll give you that. Uh, so we're going to kind of walk our way. And basically how it's set up, if you want to do this at home while you're listening, um, it's set up right there on ESPN.com. It starts with the Midwest. It goes to the East. goes to the West. It goes to the South. So we're going to mess around with that. Just have some fun. We're not going to spend – 90 minutes on it. We're just going to have some fun with it because obviously, and then we're going to basically tell some stories in a sense of uh, college basketball. And that's what we're going to do here on future podcasts. Just so you know, where there'll be, are there going to be three or four more of them? Are there going to be two? We really don't know. We really don't know. We're just being honest. Uh, We realize that, This thing in seven to ten days could get way worse than we even think. We really don't know. So we're not going to sit there and hit you over the head with content if this thing gets even that more serious. But if it's to the point where we're all at home, or not all, but a lot of people are at home and they need something to do, we want to be there for you on that one as well. So my topic beyond the bracketology will be, the 1990s Duke and how they relate to me as a college basketball fan. And this is where the hate started in the 90s. And I'm going to start with UNLV and Duke that game, and I'm going to move on from there. They did win a championship here in Minneapolis. I bet on them. I've betted against them. So I'm going to kind of break that part down. Like I said, in future shows, we're going to break down – you know, the top 10 teams or a top 10 players or favorite runs or favorite games or whatever. You know, we haven't figured out exactly what we're going to do, but that's what we're going to just talk nostalgia, basically. Um, Because, you know, this is – we're trying to give you a couple of shining moments, all right? There's not going to be one shining moment. We're going to try to give you multiple shining moments. I'm going to go ahead and pass it to my co-host Marshall and just kind of fill us in man on on what's going on with you because you like me are going to have a job uh, being disruptive but it's a different version than what's happening here in Minneapolis for me yeah and and man I I post on Facebook and I I mean I only got like 80 friends I care less but half of them probably work in restaurants because that's what I did for 15 years so I get we got to be safe, but man, it is, I mean, restaurant employees, like even when you got to file taxes, apply for loans, like people always want to know, how'd you make all your money? And you make your money off of tips. And especially like people who've been bartenders for, 
you know, the, the regular Applebee's you go to every Wednesday night, that bartender probably makes $300 a week on certain nights because she has her regulars. So for the restaurant world to get shut down, I get it because you can't have the people all together. But, I mean, you know, restaurants aren't going to pay all their employees their rent money. Like, I, I know we got to be safe, but it just it sucks for restaurant people because your, your job isn't, you know, uh, it's not a steady paycheck. You're taking people's money. And that's kind of determining how much money you make. So I just, I don't know, for restaurant stuff, I, I feel bad for that industry because I did it for a long time. It led me to where I am now. So I'm hoping that we can get back to normal on that. And honestly, if you are someone that likes to go out and eat, like do the do the takeout delivery. If you have a favorite bar or restaurant to go to, maybe go there three times a week to help those people out because obviously restaurants are going to be suffering. But I, I don't want to get too sad. We We got to talk about fun stuff like you said. But my other little rant is the fact that, it, Chris, I forget where I heard this story once, but I think I was listening to like a sport gambling podcast. But a, a, a man once said, w- even in times of, of good and bad, men will always gamble on sports and men will always drink. <laughs> well, Chris, right now, I believe I was looking online. You can gamble on uh, Russian basketball or uh, Europe or Australian rugby. I was going to say and- rugby. And, and, and they're and they're closing bars down left and right in our city. So men can't gamble and men can't drink. <laughs> they, well, they got to drink at home. <laughs> you, you just so which leads you to the fact that hey, there's a lot of I'm sure there's a lot of whites in our country who are I'm sure they're very happy, very ha- happily married to a husband. But when that husband comes home, he watches sports and the wife does her things, and you, you go to sleep and you're good. The amount of conversations males are going to have to start having with their wives because there's no sports to watch, Chris. It could get dicey. (laughs) It could get dicey. You know, there's a lot of guys, hey, I'm going home, I'm going to watch the Mavericks play, or I'm going to watch the Rangers game. Like, the the, the guy goes to a sports den. Well, you can't really go to a sport den now unless you watch replays. But replay games, it's hard to watch a game, Chris, we know the outcome. Like this morning, yeah, especially the whole game. It's uh, different yeah. to watch the fourth quarter or something, you know. Sure. Now I actually did watch, but I mean, this is a one in a million. We we'll might get to it later in the show. I did watch with the replay of the UConn Syracuse six overtime ah, Big East tournament game. Yeah. I mean, but but that's also one of the best games of all time. Like it, you know, I could even though I knew the outcome, I could kind of get into that a little bit. But that's also, yeah. like I said, a one in a million uh, situation. But yeah, um, I mean, to get to basketball itself, obviously, it's a tough time for sports. The NFL is lucky right now just because they're not being affected currently. But, right. I mean, baseball has been pushed back until mid-May. Baseball was going to start on, on March 27th. They were going to start their opening earliest opening time ever. That's right. So baseball's baseball's pushed back about six and a half weeks. The NBA, in case you've not heard in the past couple of days, if you're an NBA or college guy, NBA now is mid-June. So at, at first, Adam Silver's at like, early, hey, yeah. yeah, at yours, hey, we're going back to, uh, we're hoping for mid-April. Like, hey, give it a month, we'll be good. So right. to go to your point, Chris, if you are one of those people that thinks, hey, I'm going to go keep, you know, hanging out with big groups of friends and doing big stuff, and I don't believe in this. Well, if you're a basketball fan that still doesn't believe in maybe the, the fear we're facing, the fact right. that your favorite sport you love in the whole world said, dude, we're out for three months. Maybe that's that red flag. And, again, a lot of people are smart in our country, but there's still some people, like you said, like, I'm not sure what to think about this whole thing. Well, maybe look at the fact that an NBA company that's worth billions of dollars said, dude, we're not coming back until June. And, I mean, those people want to make money just like the rest of us. I guarantee LeBron James wanted to try to win a ring this year because, you know, right. I mean, there's so many, re- you know, they're, they're not they're not sitting out peacefully, but they're doing what they got to do. Same thing with hockey. Hockey's Dude, I heard balls. I heard a rumor, or not a rumor, but a conspiracy about a Jordan conspiracy. That Jordan <laughs> fan started this, and they didn't want Braun to get another ring. I'm like, Jerry, what are you guys? <laughs> what the fuck's going on here, guys? Have if we so, gone to this? That, that that is the, that is the biggest conspiracy theory. I want I want a a, a, a three week documentary on how Michael Jordan got the coronavirus. I mean, no, it, it wasn't him. It was his fans. Oh, his oh, fans. oh, okay. They're not putting it on Mike. It's oh. just his family. <laughs> so somehow these fucking guys are engineers, and they fucking somehow did this. Yeah, I don't, I don't know either, dude. The the only the only positive against the bracket is the fact that in October we could have a weekend where you have 
the Masters. You could have <laughs> yeah, a ma- Masters, NFL football, and playoff baseball all in the same damn weekend. So there is hope. I mean, and Chris, for me, financially right now, the fact that I can't gamble on sports or go out to eat, I'm probably going to make a lot of money. I'm going to save a lot yeah, of money. Yeah, you're like, hey, month. dude, I'm good on money. I'm fucking great on money, actually. <laughs> you know, because I've been blowing money this year because I, I was like, what is it? You know, I think God's like, dude, what's the way, way that Marshall can't spend money? Well, he right. can't go to bars and can't bet on sports. Yep. Uh, well, okay. But with all these fun and serious and jokes being said, uh, let's look at the brackets a little bit just like you said. Again, we're going off what Lenardi had projected, and again, the guy is really smart. Uh, he normally only misses one or two te- two teams a year per tournament. He, he's pretty sharp. Now, who, who where they went ended up, who knows? But and let's the reiterate mid- before we start this though, the um, how how damn good that this freaking tournament would have been. We oh. can't lose sight of what we just witnessed the last chunk of months. In this regular season, we can't lose sight of the three-way ties in in these conferences, in the the conference races. I mean, this shit, yeah, Kansas looked great down the stretch, sure. Mind you, it's Kansas, you know, so they'll either (laughs) lose in the round of 32 or they'll win the championship. So it's still Kansas, though. Let's be serious about that. But also, besides Kansas, who the fuck knew who had a chance in this one. This one was about as wide open as it gets, sir. Oh, I know. Um, so just for what would have been fun games in, in the Midwest, for my opinion, obviously, can't, well, who knows Kansas? They could have made lost use for Marquette. But, I mean, even, let's say Kansas plays Marquette in the second round. Marquette has the leading score in the country. Who? that's a tough game. I, I mean, you know, you have the leading score in the country against Kansas. Okay, that's fun. Um. If Auburn had played Wisconsin in the Sweet Six in the second round again, you have a, a Badger team that people had no idea who the hell they were, and they finished with a tied share of the Big Ten title. And Auburn was not a great team, but a very respectable, good team. Um, they fell apart at the end of the season, whereas Wisconsin, what, they win the last seven or something? Yeah, they did. Uh, they Absolutely. And then, I mean, this would have been a hell of a game. Iowa against Duke. Iowa has maybe maybe the best big in the country. Yeah, a lot of people say Obi Topin, but I mean that Luke Garza w- was no scrub. So I mean you, you yeah. got that for your second game of the tournament. Again, we just listed three matches which would have all been a Saturday or Sunday. Again, we literally just lost. And again, I know health matters, but just in the in the sport perspective world, right? The fact that Marquette could have played Kansas or Houston, and Houston was a team that finished with a tie for the American Conference. Auburn, yep. Wisconsin, and Iowa Duke for first weekend games. Holy shit, Chris. I mean, okay, Kentucky, Providence, whatever, maybe not a big game. But Iowa Duke, I mean, dude, that. And, pro- the, you know, Providence had won five against top 25 teams, too. True. So they, yeah, they had they actually. Struck. Yeah, and they, they, uh, they, you know, they actually closed really well, except obviously Kentucky closed even better, right? So, I mean, the Midwest would have been pretty fun. I'll, I'll do the West, and I'll let you do the South and East. Um, in, in the West, we were looking at a potential, okay, Gonzaga probably takes care of LSU, Oklahoma. I'll give you that. Um, Michigan, Oregon probably been, would have been a really fun second weekend game. You're doing the Mid- West right now? I'm doing the West. Yeah, I, I, I just I stay on the top half. All right, why'd you have to skip ahead, dude? Messing up our I, listeners. Now they probably uh, they probably knew it. I they, I'm the only one that got messed up. Go ahead. Um, so I mean Gonzaga probably gets out of the first weekend. Michigan Oregon if Michigan and Oregon won the first two games, hell of a game. That Peyton Pritchard for Oregon's had a hell of a year. Uh, Juwan Howard with Michigan. They started off hot, went on a big swan dive, then finished the year really hot. Again, a phenomenal phenomenal second uh, second round game. And then. Um, BYU probably plays Seton Hall. Like BYU was scoring about eight. And Indiana, as an eleven well, seed, they were pushing. They you're were right. Pushing That's no guarantee. Door. Dude, the I only know. reason why, and we're gonna we're gonna double back and say who's coming out of these just for the hell of it. But also, what the fuck is that seed for? And my first, what the fuck is that? Was BYU being a fifth or a sixth? I disagree with that. But keep going. And then they played Seton Hall, who, again, sometimes this year looked like a top-10 team, and sometimes Shiro Miles Paul was cold, looked like a, a bottom-20 team. And then, to wrap it up, 
Arizona against San Diego State, a San Diego State team who lost their last game of the conference tournament and had been trailing at halftime five of their past six games. So you got Arizona who, again, they're not great, but they were better than normal. So, I mean, even Arizona, San Diego State for a second round, whole, oh my, I, I went through half of the bracket and we have, Chris, we had six games that would have been like sweet 16 potential for the opening damn weekend. I, I can't, it literally, it, it was too good to be true. Quote applies to what would have been this March Madness. I, I just, yeah. So, I mean, BYU seen Hall or Indiana seen Hall held the game, Arizona versus San Diego State. <sighs> and that's just half, man. That, that's half. That would have been, and Oregon, Michigan probably would have been the, the top rated game to watch, but <sighs> that would have been fun, brother. That would have been a lot of fun. Yeah. No doubt about it. Um, not only are we going to double back on what the fuck is that, because that's, you know, part of the arguments right away is what the hell are they seated for and they're not seated for, right? But also, we're going to go back. Well, I'm going to do the east and south, and then we're going to go back and say what we have a problem with, right? Sure. We're also going to talk our way through it as far as who we think advances and try to advance this thing. But also, um. The toughest region. That's another thing that we always talk about is the toughest region. So we got to figure that out as well. So we are on the east side. Oops. What the hell? And now I'm going to have that. Uh, now I'm going to have problems with my internet. <laughs> what do you know? I I got you. <laughs> no, I, I just I got to oh. fix this either way because you know if I have more problems, the show the Skype's not going to. Um, what the hell? Weird. Okay. I got a, yeah, we're good. Okay. This guy's still holding up. We're good. It was giving us a little, uh, tweak there, but we're, we're good to go. Okay. Let me, uh, let me get back on the page really quick. I had to sign off the page because of that. Okay. So, like I said, we are going to double back on some of this. Um, East Side Dayton. Number one, no big surprise there. You figure how they, they were going to, you know, they earned that, I'd say. Not that they have these tremendous wins left and right, but, you know, I mean, they just haven't lost in a long time, and they actually did take on some folks a little bit. Um, so, you know, you had a uh, Colorado, Florida, which Colorado's been kind of strange all year. They look good, then they look bad. They look good, then they look bad. Florida has just been, hey, we, we're probably going to make the tournament, but we're not that good. Um, Butler at a five seed and going against Texas or Richmond, and both those schools actually finished pretty good. But you have uh, Butler and Maryland, which is a damn good game. Uh, Maryland – had a little funky way they ended the year, but man, did they look strong in some of those road victories they got too. So you're looking at Butler and Maryland. That's a pretty damn good team or a pretty good matchup. UCLA and NC State. I mean, that would have been interesting just off that 11 seed for Penn State. But luckily for uh, Marshall, Penn State gets to advance in this fake uh, thing. <laughs> Penn State, and if anybody doesn't get that joke, he, he's been calling Penn State a Sweet 16 team for about a month. Actually, longer than that, but he's he's double, he's what, quadruple down on it by now or something like that, triple down? Something like uh-huh. that. Um, do you feel still feel that way, like, theoretically, that they were going to be? I mean, if, if it, them versus Nova would have been a hell of a game, holy shit, my God, that would have been, that would have been tough. That would have been flip the coin kind of game. Penn State, Nova. And Nova finished pretty strong there, but, man, they were up and down and whatnot. West Virginia was on a nosedive, whereas Florida State was doing the opposite. And some of these 7'10s, 6'11s, the 4 and 13s have been popular the last chunk of years. You really, you know, you just don't know on some of them. So Baylor, who actually – Really nosedive in a weird way at the end. I shouldn't say nosedive like they lost four in a row, but it was kind of like, oh, really? You're going to – oh, yeah, now you have no chance at that. But, you know, being that – I'm talking about winning the Big 12. But being where we were, it does still make sense. 
that they were the number one, uh, a number one seed. And if you look at their, you know, track record non-conference, it was pretty damn good. Um, Rutgers and St. Mary's. Now, St. Mary's at eight. Did they do enough to get in the tournament? Sure, okay, whatever. Rutgers is a team that's been around. Uh, they're not going to play at home, so that would have been a problem. <laughs> at home, I don't know if anybody beats them. Um, so Baylor and I think Rutgers, that would be pretty good. Ohio State, who started the year great, fell off, then made a nice run. They're going against a solid Louisville team um, who – I just hung steady, even though they tripped up a little bit. They still were pretty strong, probably stronger than we thought going into the year. And then uh, speaking of rising, though, a sixth seed all the way up Virginia, who was like a bowl team, or maybe maybe not going to get in a, a, a chunk of weeks back, Virginia and Michigan State. And Virginia would have to go against a, a tricky you know, Cincinnati team. Um, Creighton got the second seed. I think that's something to go, okay, Seton Hall got the third. What did Nova got a third two? So they gave Creighton the second seed out of there. Um, and they'd be going against Illinois or USC, which is, you know, a crapshoot on that. Um, although, you know, I like Illinois overall, but, um, so as far as toughest region go, right? Baylor, uh, Creighton at two, Michigan State three, Louisville four. That's the South, the West. Uh, Gonzaga had to deal with San Diego State, which is kind of crazy. That's one of those, uh, to me, a little bit of a red flag. Because like, oh, wait a second. So San Diego State, they were going to get in there. It's not so much second seed or whatever, but to put Gonzaga in San Diego State in the same region, I think that would be bullshit, personally. Because it's like, Okay, so Gonzaga really didn't have to play too many people. And we know San Diego State didn't really have to play too many people. They got Gotti records. They're going to go head up. What do, what do you think about that? I mean, they, they say, Chris, they always just rank the top four and then the, the top four two seeds. And they, essentially Kansas played Kentucky, so Kentucky would have been the weakest two seed. So, so I guess in theory that means that um, either – Gonzaga was the number two, number one seed, and, and San Diego State was number three, or, or, or like two and seven of the top eight, or, or three and three and six, or four and five. I'm not sure you know, how it laid out, but they say yeah. they always do it based on top four, and then the, they do the snake order backwards for the two seeds with the one seed. So, okay, now that's what they say. Do you agree though that a number one seed and a number two seed? would be San Diego State and Gonzaga in the same – to me, I just think it's weak. It's kind of like, well, we already know what the weakest side is then, right? I mean uh, – Well, I mean, uh, if you let, – let's just look at it from a, from, from a, from a Vegas perspective. Um, is – I mean, is, is Kansas a huge favorite over Gonzaga? Well, you know? I mean, I didn't look at it from that perspective. I looked you know, at it from quality one and two perspective. I didn't look at it from, well, if you match it up, would that be tighter? That's actually a tight game. Yeah. Like, I think it's a good, I think it's a great game. I guess I wasn't looking at that perspective. I was thinking about well, what you get to do to get there. Uh, Gonzaga, especially, because actually this beef is not totally about San Diego State. Uh, because actually their non-conference is damn good. Like San Diego State is no joke. I mean, yeah, they may have some bad losses. Sure. I mean, you could probably spread that around, but, um, they beat, uh, they beat Creighton. Um, they beat, who else did they beat? They beat Iowa, I think. Let me check here. Yeah, they beat Iowa and Creighton and one other team too. And, well, BYU. BYU. I just think it's it, – it, I just don't like the fact that that's one and two in there. I think that uh, – I just, it's, it's weird that the small – two mid-majors got in one and two, and they're in the same region. That's what my problem would be. True. I mean, I, I guess from, from my perspective, though, I mean, if you're going to have them face off against the other two divisions, like I, I think San Diego State could – 
possibly beat Kentucky. So, you know, I don't know. It, it is weird, though, to put – but maybe, though, from the other – How third often do we see that, I guess is my point. How often do we see two non – no, mid-majors be number one and number two? That, I guess that's my point. In the well, same region. You know, that's you, my you, point. True. But you could say they're actually doing it to give the people a favor because – they always say, hey, we want to reward you if you make to lead eight to be have have a home field advantage. Well, if the if the uh, lead eight would have been in L.A., that's actually given them a privilege to let both teams be home teams. Because let's say and, you put right. But that's kind of adding to my point. <laughs> it's kind of like, well, why their their conferences sucked? I, 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 I mean, I don't know. I think it's just yeah. an interesting I guess I guess when's the last time two mid majors were one and two in the same region? I guess that's maybe it's happened more than I remember. You know I, that just True. that that turns me up. But that also goes on with this year. You know that also goes on with this year, right? It goes on yeah. to show you how fucking wide open this game was. Oh, um, I know. And, I know. And I definitely am not talking about a head up one and two. It's just weird to see that. Um, to me. I, I, that that really throws me off. Um, what were the best Gonzaga non-conferences? I forgot. Let me see really quick. Okay, they beat Oregon. Uh, they got washed by Michigan. Arizona's a good club. They beat them. And that's it. So, I don't know. I actually think, Sandy, I don't know, dude. So maybe, dude, based off what I just talked about, Man, I don't know. Should San Diego State be the number one seed? Shit. Yeah, I mean, I guess only knock be they, they didn't win their conference tournament against Zaga did. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. Actually, I forgot about that. I totally forgot about that. Part. So all right, yeah, I mean, all right, yeah. So okay, so so then we go to the East: Dayton, Florida State, Nova, and Maryland. And then we go um, to the Midwest, and it's Kansas, Kentucky, um, Duke, and Wisconsin. What's the toughest uh, region for you? Like deepest, uh, you know, the toughest, the, yeah. like we always talk about. I think you'd have to go south. I mean, you know, yeah, Baylor, Baylor and Creighton are, are, have been two great teams all year. Um Louisville Michigan obviously State, was Louisville. I mean, yeah. Shit. Uh, well, actually, well, I mean, Baylor, Creighton, and Louisville all were one or tied for their top. Well, sorry, excuse me. Baylor, Baylor got second. So second place won a title, tied for a title. I mean, and then and then your Michigan State was Sparty. I mean, and then your five, your five and six are Ohio State, Virginia. Like Virginia was probably the hottest team in the tournament coming in the coming into the week before we got cut off. Now. I know their offense isn't always there, but I mean they were playing as good a basketball as anyone. So, I, I, yeah, I, I'd have to vote South for the strongest um, of of the brackets. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good. That that's that is a tough one. Um, I, I I don't know. That's that is good. That is a good one. I, I the Midwest is pretty tough too. If you look at well, the number one overall seed was going to be Kansas, right? I, assumingly, yeah, based off yeah. this, not based off the tournament. Sure. The conference tournament. So you have the number one overall seed, and then you have Kentucky, who you could make an argument was one of the best teams down the stretch, right? 100%, yes. And we know they got talent, obviously. Um, and that's another thing you got to put in this equation. Now, you get these, if you get great coaches and talent, and they came in hot, I guess that's another layer, too. Wisconsin was one of the hottest teams. Uh, Duke was, you know, lukewarm coming in. Uh, but Iowa's your sixth. I mean, your sixth is Iowa. Your nine's Marquette. Yeah, that, man, gosh. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, man. So, yeah, I think it's the South or Midwest are the toughest ones. And I think – I actually think the – I still think I have a problem with having San. I have a problem with two West Coast mid mid majors in this type of year being uh, one and two, and I just do. Maybe call me old school, whatever you want. I, I just I don't know if I agree with that. And like I said, I'm not trying to sh- uh, throw shade. I actually respect San Diego State 
just as much based off their non-conference wins than Gonzaga, you know, for sure. I mean, I, I, I think it's undeniable myself, but um, it's just weird to see Kansas in Kentucky. I guess that's my point. Okay, yeah, Kansas and Kentucky. Okay, what's the other one? Too? Oh, Gonzaga and San Diego State. You see what I'm saying? I guess that's the way I'm looking at it. More of a surface thing um, than if one and two would be a great game. You know what I mean? Sure. Like Dayton and Florida State, let's say one and two met. You know what I mean? Dayton and Florida State, that would be one and two. It's a mixture. you got a small school who deserves to be there, and you got an ACC team. You know what I mean? you got Baylor and Creighton. You know, it's interesting. That's very interesting. Okay, so out of the Midwest, who's who's coming out of the Midwest for you, buddy? Who's coming out? I just I mean, don't – how did Kentucky get – I just don't understand why Kentucky got slapped across the face so much. They got to go against Kansas. It's weird. I, I think the toughest games would have been – um, Auburn, Wisconsin, let's say Wisconsin gets Kansas. And then obviously I think Kentucky, Kentucky Duke would have been a hell of a game. So I, I would have, I think the betting favorite would have had to have been Kansas. They have a hell of a matchup against Wisconsin and Kentucky Duke would have been great. But I, I would say Kansas just because they're probably the most well-rounded team. Kentucky yeah. was super young. Duke was not great defensively. I'm not sure if Wisconsin. I mean, Wisconsin. The way they play, they they always could upset people. But I would have leaned Kansas with Wisconsin being a really fun one, and Duke Kentucky being a maybe not the best game overall, but a, a great one for um for ratings and just the looking back to the Leitner shot and all that stuff. Because I'll tell and you, the blue when, blood, yeah, just in general, yeah. Whenever I've gone on my basketball trips, I was I'd always go to a different city at this time of year for the tournaments. Man, you want to talk about people that hate Duke. Kentucky fans hate Duke just as much oh, yeah. as Carolina does, 100%. They're, we we kind of become friends for all there because Kentucky fans do not like Duke at all. No, you're right. <laughs> that is for sure. And we missed out on the coach bitching because he he'd be like, so how the fuck did I end up in a Kansas bracket as the number one two seed? How in the world did I get here? I got a squad that was one of the hottest squads behind Kansas to close the year, but I got them as my one seed. That would be a funny interview, like you always said, <laughs> with the coach at Kentucky, Calipari. Like he'd have been, he would have been livid at that. Yeah, it's, see, I, I like Kentucky or Kansas, and I do, I do like Kansas though going on. Although that's like a national championship uh, game right there. I think potentially it could have been if you put these in different. Uh, areas and obviously this is the part he doesn't always get right is where they're actually at that is the one where there are some ones where you go what the fuck it's really about who gets in where he's very accurate dude. like like super accurate that's why we're using it um so then the east how do you see the east playing out do you think it could it, you know i mean penn state or nova could could get to the elite eight just as fast, you know, I mean, and how strong do you feel, how how do you feel about Dayton coming into the tourney in general, and while you're talking about this stuff, I'm going to look up their non-conference too, just to update it again. Yeah, I, I mean, they got they got the best player in the conference, it would have been really fun to see that Obi Topin have a coming out party, because I mean, all year people said the guy's the best post in the league, maybe the best player in the country. And it's like, all right, time to watch them. And it's like, ah, oh. I, I mean, Dayton, maybe their games were on CBS Sports Network, but they didn't yeah. get any much ESPN love. But um, so, I mean, it's really hard to speculate because, I mean, that guy, they easily could have, he easily could have got past to the Elite Eight because, I mean, hell, they could beat Colorado, Florida. I mean, uh, I guess the biggest games would have been for that one would have been um, Maryland, Dayton, because Maryland hasn't cared who they've played on. They, they're, they, them being on the road doesn't matter. So, Maryland Dayton would have been fun. And for the bottom, man, I mean, I, I can't even speculate because, I mean, I had my Penn State boys going to Sweet 16. The Villanova at times this year shot the three incredibly. And then you got West Virginia, Florida State, the two teams we always rip on for never making it to the Sweet 16 or further. They're playing each other. So someone would have had to, someone would have had to survive. I mean, that would have been – that bottom eight would have been super, super fun. And, you know, again, that that's assuming that Penn State – 
know of a West Virginia Florida State, I would have won. I mean, I guarantee the way this year went, Chris, we would have had a, a lot of high seed upsets too, which would have made it even more fun. But uh, so I would have taken, if I had a bet, I would have bet on um, Dayton or uh, either Penn State or Nova. I mean, I would I, Penn State, the win, winner of Penn State Nova would play Dayton for a Final Four spot. All right, and they uh, Dayton is they. Um, they lost to Kansas ninety to eighty four, so they are able to. They gave up a lot of points, but they put up a lot of points too. And I don't actually, you know what though? I don't know if that big was in that game. Not that it really matters. They beat St. Mary's. They lost. You know, Colorado's okay. You know, they're okay. They lost a two-point gain to them, um, but it was really just never losing again. You know, that, that's why they were there. Um, yeah, you know, and, man, now Florida State, dude, what are, this is their year finally to get to the Final Four. We haven't even talked about that. Remember we talked about that the last couple of weeks or, you know, last chunk of weeks of the season? We've always talked about that program because they're damn good. When it's Duke or North Carolina having to face them or even Miami – a couple of years back when they were good at Virginia, it was out they're, they're, they're a top flight program on many levels. They got the lead eight a couple of years ago. This could have been the year, dude. This re- I didn't really think about that until I started breaking this down because they wouldn't have probably had to mess. Well, maybe they would have had to mess with Maryland, but I mean, this is their best shot to get to the final four. I never thought I'd say this, but I kind of feel sorry for Florida State fans. Wow. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, man, that sucks for them, dude. They closed so fucking good, too. Won the freaking thing. Won the NC- ACC. All right, so um, Gonzaga. We feel pretty good about Sweet 16 because LSU and Oklahoma, eh, whatever. Um, Michigan, Oregon, like you said, that is like a pick em game. Uh, I feel like Michigan would win, though. That's a pick game. Do you have a problem with BYU at number six? They beat Gonzaga. What else they do? Let's see what else they do. They beat Houston, which it wasn't the Houston from last year. Uh, they lost to Kansas, but that'll give you a good loss. They beat Ukula, who may have gotten in, maybe not, but may have gotten in. So, so they beat, so going back to what I said, they beat Gonzaga. That's what they did. So beat, they lost to St. Mary's twice or once. So they, they beat them once and lost. Oh, those are really good games too. Um, so beating Gonzaga got you into the sixth seed. Basically is what, what it looks like to me. How do you see this coming down? And do you have a problem with, uh, Number six, BYU, being there at six, not seven or ten or eight or whatever. Do you yeah, think that Gonzaga I, win is good enough to get him a six seed? No, because, I mean, the resume is that in my head of, like, a, a Houston or Marquette, who is eight and a nine, I'd say it was just as impressive as um, as uh, BYU or should even, right. even West Virginia or Illinois. You know, I, yes, I, I think they got too much of a love of a seed. I know they had a – a good year and they scored a lot of points this year, but that really doesn't grant you a six seed when I think that Illinois, Houston, Marquette would all beat you head up anyways. Right. Um, for that division, yeah, I, I really think that though, you know, those are the two power horses. I think you would have had a San Diego State, Gonzaga go to the final four in LA crazy type of game. Just cause I think just from the year, well, if San Diego, if San Diego State could have regrouped, cause I mean, the way they came down the stretch, they really were struggling. But if they could have found their mojo again, they had a pretty easy seven teams to get past. And I think Gonzaga, I mean, they, you know, I know they're in a weak conference, but that offense this year was just killing people. They were almost yeah. averaging like 83 points a game. So did they play in a great division? No. But were they having a, a sick offense, which you can't even, whether your division's good or bad, you can't fake scoring 84 a game in college. So I think it would have been a San Diego State Gonzaga showdown in LA, which would have been actually really, really cool. So San Diego State lost to UNLV in a tight game, and then they lost to Utah State in a tight game. That's all they 
That was their only two losses down the stretch. Otherwise, they had that long run. Yeah, you're right. That is a weird thing because, you know, here I am listing what they did, and they have, like I said, I, if, if if San Diego State went above Gonzaga, you wouldn't see me blink an eye um, because of their wins. And some people focus on their losses, but I wouldn't have been shocked because they have better wins, quite frankly. Um yeah, they have better wins. Uh, it's not it's not actually that close. They beat Creighton. You know what I mean? Like last I checked, they're pretty good. Is Creighton pretty good or am I am I lost? Am I talking about a different year? Yeah, they they had a hell of a year. I, I really yeah, want to see them play too. And San Diego State beat them. Uh so I'd say San Diego State or Seton Hall would get out of there. Um that's that is competitive though. Um and then Baylor they got Louisville or Ohio State, Rutgers, St. Mary's kind of sneaky, Virginia improving much. Like you said, Virginia, yeah, they, they closed really well, though. It beat some quality teams, and they're a sixth seed. Um, Michigan State, number three. Creighton, number two. Yeah, dude, this is a – man, bad, wow, that, that is great matchups. Does Virginia and Michigan State play every year in the tournament, or is that just me too? No, I mean, how I many good. fucking times – Either the, same the, thing. The, the round of 32 or the Sweet 16, just book it. Just book it. Virginia and Michigan State's plans. 100%, you're right. Um, for this one, I would have really had to, I mean, flip a quarter. I mean, I love Creighton all year. They're super fun to watch. But, hell, I mean, oh, Jesus. I mean, you, you could make an argument for Baylor, Creighton, Sparty, Virginia, and Louisville all to win. I mean, that that's five legit teams that could have won that bracket. That would have been super fun to watch. You know, and, and now it, that you just said that, as far as a real chance, yeah, I'm like, I, I might, I might, you may have just talked me into the South, or at least the tie for sure. God yeah. dang, yeah, that those, and, and it's actually the games too. Like, we could go up the seeds, but then you go up the games, too, within. You're like, oh, wow, yeah. Huh. I know. So you would have went with Creighton, though, huh, just because? I, I would have picked them to win, yeah. But, I mean, you know, that you're, you're essentially slapping in the face Illinois and Ohio State, who at times this year were leading the Big Ten or really close. I mean, that just a loaded, loaded. That would have been, again, so much fun. That's damn bikes. And Baylor, you know, like, who the hell? Oh, you know? well, yeah. They could have got their shit together. Okay, so um, I'm going to let you do your thing as far as a, 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 something you want to share pertaining to March Madness, and then I'm going to do mine, and then we're going to get out of here. Okay. Um, I, I I think looking back, I mean, I, I, I think I was just going to mention maybe a couple of just crazy games back in the day, just some like ones that you kind of want to always remember over time. And then I'll, 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 I'll get, throw it to you. Um, the first one that always comes to mind just to relive like three great games was the Kansas Ollie, Ollie Farouk Minash, uh, you, uh, Northern Iowa game. Northern you Iowa. Yeah. That, Chris? Oh God. I mean, I remember this, this when was, they hit that three on the break. And they were up, they already had a lead, and it was like, oh, you're going to shoot that three? Oh, you just hit that three. It's over. Oh, and, and all the announcers were like, what are you doing? Like, they're, they're, they're up uh, in the game. There's like 23 seconds left from the shot clock. Pulls yeah, up, there was like boom. 40 seconds left in the game, right, still? Something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> that. And the game was in Can It was either in Kansas or in Missouri. I mean, you know, the UNI fan base was cheering, but I remember that whole game. That was a, they were in control of the whole game. And, and Kansas, obviously the more superior team, would make a run. They'd punch back, make a run, they'd punch right. back. But I always remember the pulling up for three, Ali Maruk Fanash, and everyone's like, what the hell? Are you? Oh, shit, he hit it. And then after that, it was, it was curts and it was, it was ball. Yeah, then you so, knew. Then you knew it was all. Oh, game was yeah. over. And you had another classical, typical Kansas choke. Cause again, I'm, I'm sure they, they had to at least spend like a, uh, a, a 10 or 11 point favorite. So that, that story one, actually I'll do three more. Cause one came to mind when I said that. We're going to have the Kansas two. choke. We're going to have to have the Kansas choke section too in the next show. Oh, dude, we could do a podcast on that. That'd be it. That'd be an hour worth of great podcast. Um, 
So I'll, again, I'll do I'll do three more. Um, for number two, I loved the VCU Shaka Smart run that they made. I mean, I guess I can't remember a specific game, but I mean, I'm pretty. I'm 98. Well, every game was sure. tight too. It seemed like it seemed like they had to just grind out with that defensive style, you know. And I'm almost positive. I think they actually made the tournament and they did a play-in game. So I'm pretty sure they played on a Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, it was almost 11 positive. seed. It was 11 seed. So, so, so you get your mojo going, and then, dude, you just saw a team that was like full court pressing the whole game, and like that really doesn't exist much anymore. And all these dudes that people didn't know about at all. I mean, even if you were a diehard basketball fan, you probably watched maybe two VCU games unless you're a diehard VCU fan. And you saw this up and down, like, not craziness, but a methodical press. And, and then he makes the Final Four, and I know they came up a little bit short, but that Shaka Smart run was one of the coolest just runs of a team because they really didn't have any star players. Like, they just had a bunch of athletic, quick dudes, and they played in such a different style, Chris. I'm sure you didn't remember. even hear about it, dude. It, was just, it just came, and then there was nothing you could do about it. You were just fucked. I know. I, I... – I just that that was that that was a that was a fun one. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll brag about it for a little bit. I mean, I I have to. Uh, that O nine Tar Heel team, just one of the best teams of all time. Obviously, being a fan, that was awesome. But um, in 08, they had lost, but then all the boys came back. And I mean, it's and I say one of the best of all time because just if you're looking at just simply playoff numbers, they they didn't really have a close game the whole tournament. I think no. in the second round, uh, my boy Ty Lawson had a sprained ankle. And I think Arkansas put up a little bit of a fight. But, I mean, in the Sweet 16, Elite Eight, Final Four, and National Title, I remember watching that game. I was living in Vegas at the time. And they played Sparty for the National Title. I, I'm almost certain they were up like 23 points at half. It's like, holy God. Because it's rare that you have a team that runs through the whole term without even having a hiccup. And I guess you can say that a hiccup. I know the guy had a sprained ankle and stuff, so okay, they had they had one close game, but the other five were complete just demolishing of teams. And, and there's been a lot of great teams to win a title, but very few. And I, I know I'm bragging, but that that old night Carolina team was just they they kicked the crap out of people. It, it, Elite Eight, they Final separated Forge. themselves in that tournament. In Michigan yeah. State was a damn good club. They had a, a variety of good players oh, on that team, too. Absolutely. And you're going to tell within the first 10 or 12 minutes, it's like, okay, well, that was fun. That was a good game. It's over now, though. <laughs> it was. It was. And That uh, had been the year after we started our podcast, I think. You're right. You're like right. a year later, we started our podcast or something like that. And just, I mean, just for the last point, just because this is still historical not too long ago, the fact that a one seed actually lost. I remember. Yeah. I I, I mean True. for the for Virginia. the Virginia moment. I just. And a year yeah. later, a year later they won it, right? Or two years yeah. later. Yeah. Uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you, you you get it. It just it actually happened for the first time ever because you'd always you'd always be the you'd always have the one friend that joke. What if I put a one over a sixty in my bracket, guys? What do you think? Uh-huh. Right. And it finally happened. Because whenever I go on my basketball trips, I'd always, I always always go to the bars. I rarely went to games. But for this time, I actually went to a game. But then I didn't watch the game because I was camped out in a in a uh, a TV arena. Oh, or, right. Uh, God, I forget what city we were in. It might have been – I can't remember. It might have been Orlando. So we would have been at, like, where the Magic played or something. But I remember it's like, dude, I just checked my phone. I'm like, dude, Virginia – and that Maryland Baltimore school were close. It's like no way. Like come on, right. you got to be kidding me. And I think I, at halftime I was like, well, f this. I'm going to watch this game. And it, it slowly, went from, I was like one of the first ten people down there. And then with a couple minutes to go, there you probably had like ninety people watching one of those hallway TV sport arena TVs, and it's like people are just cheering and going crazy. And it's like, dude, what are? Is this real? And and it was such a cool game because, dude, I mean. They, they did. It wasn't like a lucky win. Like Virginia got their butt whooped. Like that team was hitting threes. They didn't care. Virginia tried to punch back. It really never even got that close. Like Virginia was down big. They tried to fight back to seven or eight, and the, even then they're like, "No, nah, dude, we're good. Yeah, you're going home. Peace." So it was cool to see the number one seed like lose the game. 
And, and I know it's become more popular now, or I should say more common, for a three and a two to possibly lose every once in a while. The two, two and three seeds go down now more often. But to see the one seed, I mean, that's what just one of those cool moments. Like, dude, you remember watching that time Virginia lost? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, holy shit, it happened. So those are just kind of my four. And they had been the show team. Moments. You know, they had they had been like they had really developed a a program, obviously defensively, and they had started to win the ACC. They started knocking at the door of the ACC every year. They had really been on the up and up, right? I mean, it was on the up and up. The only thing is, they kept losing in the tournament and wouldn't advance as far as they should, right? Yeah, 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 a hundred percent. And then they freaking much like Villanova. A chunk of years back before they started winning these national championships, we were wondering why the fuck they're so good in the regular season, but then they fall apart. Sure enough, they've both gotten over the hump, but to go that low and to not knee jerk and fire your coach, you know, um, and then not long after that, turn around and win a national championship last year, dude. I mean, that's, that's crazy, dude. It's almost like they, it's almost like that would be something that'd be like the case of how the Minnesota Vikings would win the championship. You know, some just dramatic shit happens to them horribly. And then like a year later, two years later, they do like, Oh shit. They, Oh my God, they did it. You know, it's just, that's wild, dude. And I'm glad the coach didn't get fired after that because there was a couple in a row where they kept getting beat by Michigan state or something. And then they freaking go down as a one seed. That's a good call, dude. That was a good call because it was just a, we knew it would get going to happen, but we just never really believed it would happen. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, the odds will tell you it's going to happen, but not till 2074. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, <laughs> who would have guessed that happened, you know? Um, and then I just got one more thing, then we'll get out of here. Like I said, for those, uh, you know, kind of in and out of this podcast tonight or just in general on the archive, we will be back next Monday talking college hoops. Talking, uh, you know, just great moments in March Madness history. And we're going to pick the winners next week, too. We got everybody to the Final Four, basically, in our mind. Then we're going to, now that we've, you know, digested it next week, well, I guess we got to pick a national championship. But my thing is a memory of the 90s when college basketball, late 80s, but then when the 90s turned over and – until, like, late 90s, it was, I mean, the 80s and 90s of college basketball, if you look at the rosters and the depth, if you look at, like, go look at, like, a preseason All-American shot, like a photo of these dudes, and you'll be like, oh, my God, dude, it's Chris Webber, it's this, it's that. These guys are full-grown men, and they're – this is before their year, like they're juniors, you know, it, it really blows you away. But that, you know, after once KG busted open the gates, then Kobe, then Tracy, a bunch of these dudes that we, we don't know now went pro and that kind of messed up college and pros for a second. It still lingers, but not nearly as bad. I think people lose that uh, sight of, dude, it was really bad though, because we had these guys that weren't even – they didn't even have one year of college so we could see if they're ready to go or not. Like, it was bad there for a second as far as where it could go. And uh, luckily they, they starved off some of that. But it still will never be as deep just because, you know, the money. I mean, what are you going to do? You, you know. Um, but anyway, Duke, why they are hated. So it all starts with, well, first of all, Duke got their ass kicked in a national championship game. And my uh, co-host is just sitting there with a big smile. He probably cracked another beer. He's just happy uh, because, you know, I'm going to just destroy Duke in this one. No, I'm not really going to destroy him, but, yeah, I am actually. But anyway, um, I mean, the year before, 1990, Duke and UNLV in the national championship, you want to talk about blowout? You want to talk about dominant game? We were talking about North Carolina 2009. I mean, this was a, like, little boys playing against full-grown men Larry Johnson looked like he was 29. Stacey Ogman had to have been like 28. You would have guessed these guys were Cuban. You know how Cubans kind of get up here and they kind of, whatever, here's my birth certificate. Hey, 
bring in the, you know, hey, I'm not ripping Cubans because boxing, baseball, dude, they, they've added a lot to our sports up here, no doubt about it. But they got to do what they got to do. You know, I, I, the fact that they got to go pro and they got to leave their country, it, it's very admirable. But as we know, when they get here, sometimes they can fudge some stuff. And Stacey Ogman was probably like 29. Uh, but anyway, um, they just beat him in every department uh, in that national championship game. They smoked him. It was just like, you know, the principles of great, amazing basketball that you think of, but also a mix of street ball. Like, in your face, dunking on your head, kiss my nuts. You know what I mean? That type of thing. It was just the nastiest beatdown that I had ever seen at that time in my life. It was like, oh, my God. Then the year later, Duke beat him 79-77 to in a um, regional, or not a regional, in a semifinal, national semifinal. And the biggest thing is what changed was Grant Hill was in the lineup, okay? Um, so that as – now, he only got 11 points in that game. You know, it's not like in five assists, five rebounds, but – you know, that was kind of the biggest difference. They also had uh, Davis, Brian Davis, off the bench, um, which was a nice one. Antonio Lang barely played, but, wow, he was on that team too. So you got Leitner, Hurley, Grant Hill, Thomas Hill, and Kubek. I don't remember Kubek, but I remember Davies. I think he was kind of the closer, minutes-wise. He actually was second in shots that game. So somehow, some way, and when you look at the breakdown of this game, it is hard to not think, you know, I mean, Anderson Hunt put up three or 11 three-pointers. Now, 11 three-pointers doesn't sound like much now, but 11 three-pointers back then was like, dude, what are you, stop, dude, what are you doing? You know, like Larry Johnson is launching a random three um, at a time in the game where you're like, hey, you're not even, a, you're not in the future as a Nick hitting those threes. You're not that guy yet. What are you doing? Um, that type of thing. And, you know, most people think the fix is in on that game. But, hey, you know, that is what it is. Um, but Duke took that ramp. I got to give him credit a little bit. Because then they went back-to-back national championships. And one of them was in Minneapolis. So it's another personal thing I'll always remember because it took place here, too. And that's off the backs of the UNLV thing. I was actually on vacation down in Arizona just getting back in time to watch the last chunk of that game going, holy shit, this is, oh, my God, what? You know, we got delayed coming back. We were actually watching some, uh, I think, some some preseason college baseball in Arizona State. I was uh, visiting my aunt and uncle. Um, with my uncle, I was out. So we were going to, like, okay, we'll for sure get the second half. No, we missed a good chunk of the second half. But we were shocked when we found out how close this game was and yada, yada, yada. Anyway, Duke went on, won back-to-back championships. And the hate begun. Um, but then, so I was always like, man, F Duke, dude. I, I don't know. I don't like it. Whatever. But then Grant Hill was still on the squad, right? Still had the, you know, the, the Cherokee Parks and shit like that. And also the Timberwolves, Leitner, Parks, Will Avery. The Timberwolves have gone through their fair of <laughs> Duke players uh, to really no success at all. But... When they played Arkansas, I finally, you know what? Betting wise, I gotta get my head right, Chris. Chris, get your head right. Duke's gonna win. They got Grand Hill, dude. Just Duke's gonna win. Just finally bet on Duke. Pull your head out of your ass. Get out of your personal shit with them. Okay, great. Then Arkansas beat them, <laughs> and it really came down to the Scotty Thurman Rainbow Three. That will always just like, that thing ain't going in. Oh, it went in. And that basically that basically did it. And after that, it was like, I'm, I'm back to hating Duke, and I'm always going against Duke. That was my mentality. And then it came to UConn. This will be the last game I talk about. UConn against Duke. And that was a – I don't remember the odds game on that one, Marshall, but that was kind of a pick em game. You know, Duke was the, 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 the team that everybody either hated or loved but they also thought was the favorite. But when you started to see a UConn squad near the end of that year, I mean, you're talking about 37-2 and two and 34-2 and two coming in. 
So this matchup was disgusting. So obviously I didn't like Duke, right? They had uh, Trajan Langdon, Elton Brand, Will Avery, Sean Battier. They had Corey McGetty coming off the bench. And this is when it started to change for everything in college, too. They had McGetty, Will Avery, and Elton Brand go pro that year. And that blew us away because it's like, oh, damn, Duke lost some people? Oh, shit. And Will Avery became a Timberwolf, didn't do anything else, a different story. Um, and actually, Nate James, too. I forgot about him. And then UConn, you had Rich Hamilton, Ricky Moore, defensive specialist, Kevin Freeman, Volskull, that big old white dude, long, lanky, block shots, and then Khalid Ali, uh, Aline from here. And that's also why I was going for him, too, because, like, okay, they got a Minneapolis North dude there, and they got a squad? Oh, I'm going for them. I'm going for That's my squad. And I picked them all the way through the year. I picked them. You know, it wasn't like a crazy pick by the time we got to the to the championship game. But still, that, that in the back of your head, a lot of the experts just went, Duke, oh, it's got to be Duke, got to be Duke. And UConn did it, and – El Amin at the line basically closed it out. And the year before that, he did that as a true freshman. The year before that, he, like, blew up the state tournament, dude. He had all these scouts there, and he scored, like, 10 points in, like, a very short amount of time. And the last one was a game-winning bucket at the buzzer. And I remember him jumping up on the press row and running down the press row. It was the coolest thing I ever saw. So that's my Duke 1990 story, okay? Did I rip them enough for you in there? Uh, I mean, I, I could do one next week if you want. I, I know that uh, – I know Christian Leitner pissed off a lot of people too. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that from a – I did like Hurley though. I got to admit, I did like Hurley because he's that short dude who just wanted to fight everybody. You know what I mean? I did like him though. Because he was oh, yeah, a he, he guy. He, him and Leitner bumped heads, too. They, they actually did that, yeah. why we hate Christian Leitner 30 for 30. And, I mean, even those guys weren't exactly always buddy-buddy on the same page. But, yes. And, and since right. then, the hatred for Duke is growing. Um, Carolina fans hate Duke. Florida State fans hate Duke. Kentucky fans really hate, I mean, it just it's a beautiful thing. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's all, that's all i got to say for now. Um, so, as Chris said, we'll be back next week. I mean, we're going to have something to talk about, you know, at this time when we're looking at three months of no NBA, which I would meet, I think that would tie the same for MLB and hockey. Like we're going to have to we'll keep some sports stuff coming. You got, you got to have something going on in life. Cause once NFL free agency is over, uh, you're going to really be griping hard for a uh, uh, sports stuff. So we'll, we'll break down our final four. As Chris said, we might do like, Hey, our favorite team of all time, something, something fun, something to, Clear your head, keep you from not worrying about jobs, health, whatever is going on in our country. We got to give you some fun, uh, fun in your week. So until then, I know I, I always say this. I always say stay healthy and have a good day and just, you know, don't don't get sick. I guess I truly mean it now. Uh, stay healthy, don't get sick. Um, avoid going out to those big groups. Uh, all that stuff does help. At least that's what the doctors say in our country, and they're the people trying to help us out right now. So uh, until our next pod. Again, enjoy time at home. Enjoy time with your family. The boys are out tonight. Peace.